Ladies and gentlemen, let me um, start with an observation about um, the issue, uh, comment on the history for a moment, and then turn to the two focal points I want to address in the rules. I'll use three minutes and see if we can help us catch up. First of all, the problem is this. It is widely and well known that the production of meat is manufacturing. The production of meat is being ravaged in the United States, and our economy is being harmed by it. The United States Department of Agriculture, with these rules, is attempting to stem the tide against that problem. It's attempting to do that by reinvigorating a statute that has been too relaxed in its enforcement, a statute that has not had a change in its purpose or a change in its fundamental language. These rules will reinvigorate. They will not reinvent anything about the law. The Packers and Stockyards Act is designed to protect the meat manufacturing sector of the economy in two ways. Number one, its purpose was and is to ensure that producers are paid promptly and fairly. Number two, its second purpose is to ensure that producers can compete from their diverse locations and their diffuse numbers into a market that has always been dominated by far fewer buyers than sellers on a basis that is fair. Nothing about the statute and its purposes has ever changed, and these rules will not change them. Since the statute was enacted, these things have happened to erode it away. First, it has not been vigorously enforced by the United States Department of Justice or by the United States Department of Agriculture or by producers. It's essentially because the enforcement mechanism has been complicated by some deficiencies in the law. Those deficiencies include no way for a producer to get the costs of prosecuting litigation back and complexities at the agency level that the agency now is trying to address. PNS Act served as a model for drafting the Securities Act of 1933, 12 years after it was enacted. The Securities Act has mostly worked because are a prejudgment interest and attorney's fees provisions in that statute that encourage private enforcement and because the Department of Justice and the Securities Exchange Commission have been active at its enforcement, unlike the Packers and Stockyards Act. Today, the USDA, in the rules that are proposed, is taking a new position in terms of a regulatory expression but that position is not new to the USDA or the PNS. Since President Carter, every administration, Reagan, Bush one, Clinton, Bush two, Obama, all said that the Packers and Stockyards Act does not require that an individual producer prove harm to the entire market order to enforce an individual right. These rules reinvigorate that expression of policy. Do not change the position of the USDA. Secondly, over the years, seven United States courts of appeal have been confronted with cases, cases in which there was a disparity of power in the litigation process and in which they slowly eroded to a conclusion that all Packers and Stockyards enforcement requires injury, proof of injury to the entire marketplace. That's not the law, hasn't been, isn't, and these rules would directly focus the courts on the fact that they've drifted from the purpose of the statute. So, in summary, new rules reinvigorate, do not reinvent. They address the problem of protecting business of manufacturing meat. We have lost many manufacturers, and many of those have been manufacturers of meat. USDA is trying to protect those who remain 
keep them competitive.